All right, let's enable the accelerate and see what that will give us. So the default mode is add. There's like blend and pull, but honestly multiply, that's what I usually use. So this will now blast everything out. Um, it's going to be quite chaotic. So you see, like it just speeds everything up and that's not <laughs> really what we want. We want to, we want this uh, and the accelerate the way I use it is when you need that extra boost at the beginning of the explosion. I'll show you multiple examples of this. Uh, this is kind of the basic one. You can do it in a few different ways. So I'll show you two different ways of adding that extra boost. Actually, there's three different ways. So the first way would be through, let's say you have, let's say this is our main sim, right? So bam. The first way would be by retiming this. Oof. See that? Oof. Just gives it that extra pop at the beginning. That's way number one. Way number two is with the, the Skadoosh Accelerate. And way number three is, this is a bit old school. I'm not sure if anybody is still using this, but you can go inside and go inside of here. Uh, go, uh, go inside of here. And then after the gas sub steps you do a gas repeat solver i haven't done this in a while but you override the minimum data i don't know exactly how all of this works this is just something that uh, we did so then apply data and switch value and here you copy paste that parameter and now if you put this to two uh, let me disable this now everything's going to be twice as impactful Right, set this to three. You'll see it's going to be like, like even more. Let's do ten, just to see if this is working. So you can see, like at ten, it's just repeating everything. Uh, that's why it's called a gas repeat. It's also yeah. So now it's repeating everything. So it's going to be like extremely, extremely fast. Like poof, you see that, <laughs> just like explosive to the max. So you can do something like three, and then after a few frames, go back to one and this set always. So it's going to be switching. So now if we take a look, it's going to be, oh, we have a lot of previews by now, but see that just feels more impactful. I honestly, I don't do this anymore. Um, I would just rather do this with these forces. Uh, but yeah, sometimes I would back in the day, I did use this uh, on a few explosions I did. So this would speed everything up essentially just boost the velocity in the direction that it's going. But you do need to use a control field. And in this case, I like using temperature. So if temperature is above three and below one, essentially use this. So now it's gonna, at the beginning where we have temperature, uh, maybe it's still too much. So let's, let's put this to 50 because we are, we were clamping it. Ooh. Uh, do we need to put this to one? Yes, we do. So now because our temperature dissipates quite fast, you see that? Like it's just, it just gives it a bit of a kick. Uh, target max speed, it serves as our clamp. But if we go to just more accelerate, you'll see it's going to speed it up at the beginning. Um, this could introduce more mushrooms. So you would need to break them up again. But see, it's just like... Doof. Oof, just speeds it up and then you can clamp your temperature right you can always go and field and let's visualize see this just visualize this field let's um so we have our turbulence let's disable that let's disable acceleration we only want to check we only want to check our temperature mask so temperature zero to one visualize let's put this to 10. so this is our temperature field so it's still quite active for a while. So this is where we go like three and maybe maybe three. So only at the beginning. Maybe put this to one. So we want this to both. And then let's see. We can always animate values as well. And let's use the ramp. So let's clamp it. So, so yeah, I mean, Again, you can create your own custom field or animate these parameters, but now we can use mask to 
enable and you just use mask. So that mask is now going to be refit already. So if we go back to our uh, density, disable the visualizer. So see, now it's just going to blast it up, uh, creating a huge mushroom. Yes, but see that? It's like just boost, just boosting it out. So maybe we have that. Let's do gas turbulence. So we had that before. So um, that's our gas turbulence, but uh, you can use that as well. Yes, so that's actually a good point. So gas uh, turbulence, you can just use this uh, as a standalone as well. So all of these tools are standalones as well. I don't know how I forgot that, uh, but drag, gas drag, yes. But uh, the Skadoosh Fire Helpers is a wrapper, and all of these tools exist individually as well. So we do curl noise, 0 0.4 amplitude. Let's just go super crazy, maybe three. So we break it. Maybe one was actually fine. I just want to break this initial. Let's see what, what it would take to break it. Okay. And then let's... Let's bring back this. Uh, so we would go from 500 between 1 and 5. So we just want to break it a bit. And it would now be a good time to start introducing substeps because we are just moving too fast for uh, in order to break this shape, right? So the turbulence doesn't have enough data to work with to actually see. Like The, the higher we go, the more we're going to disturb this. So let's do a... Let's do a preview of this. Oof. Oof. So I think it's still too much. So now on our accelerate, we can always go like 1 and 15, right? I try to stay away from animating parameters because imagine what if you have like a sequence of explosions in one sim, then this, is, this ain't going to work anymore. So be be procedural as much as you can. Oof. It looks a bit wonky right now. Bit wonky if we disable both of these. Just want to see how it looks without it. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of pushing this to the extremes just to visualize a point. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So I think this 500 is actually way too much. And I think the frequency needs to be higher. I don't know why it's going to the side that much. It kind of feels like a bug, to be honest. Like going, it's going like too much to the, to the right. So let's do it with our, let's do it with a disturbance. And let's do a high block base. So something like that. And one. So let's animate it again. So from here to, let's say, something like one. Even that is going to be too much. Yeah, I don't know why it's going to the right so much again. That is a bit weird. I'll ask Corbin if that's something that's the expected behavior, but it is going a bit to the right, which I wouldn't expect. I would still expect it going up more. One last thing we can try is putting this to add. Yeah, it's going to the kind of to the right again. But um I hope you get the general idea. Well we'll see. So it does blast off. I would use this in a volcano situation where you really need that fast initial blast. But I do wonder if um I'll check if everything is if this is doing it correctly. It feels like it's doing the right thing, but I don't know why it's going too much to the right. Okay. So I think that covers all of the individual tools when it comes to Skadoosh, but I did want to show you a few more examples of this. So Skadoosh Accelerate. Um, 
this is kind of what we just covered actually uh, i will skip this i'll skip this one uh, but if you guys know corbin has his own workshop called film effects so on in that workshop he's recreating the bubble bomb from a solo so i have i made an example here for his workshop where essentially we are blasting a lot of density like it's let's say it's like a dust smoke explosion so let me actually bring Let me open uh, up that scene. So this was one of the shots that I did. So you can see in the beginning, it's quite explosive. And that's where I use the accelerate. Okay, so that's the file. So this is the explosion. Again, see, it looks horrible, right? But once you remap it, ah, see that? Ooh, that's a huge difference. Uh, in this case, I was just multiplying it down, but in a lot of cases, I do remap it. I'll show you that in a second on how to do the remapping. So this had that uh, explosiveness to it. So it's like, bam. And <clears throat> I did use, let me check real fast. I did use the switch. So, you know, when I said that I don't use it a lot, this is literally, <laughs> this is the last time I used it in a while, but I did use it. But I also use this. So this is the accelerate before it became a tool and then Corbin rebuilt it and made it a bit better. But this is kind of the first, I think this is a, a shout out to Attila. I think he showed me this setup a while ago, but essentially this is the custom, this is the code for this acceleration thing. So you, we create a field called velocity scale and then through if statements and ramps, essentially speed min, speed max, and then we uh, fit the temperature between temp max, temp min and temp max. We put this through a ramp. So this fit flame, we put it through a ramp called motion change. And then we say if speed is higher than speed min, and if speed is lower than speed max, and temperature is higher than a threshold, thresh, threshold flame. Oh, sorry, it's right here. So if this is, if temperature is higher than uh, thresh flame, I think this should be a value. Uh, well, but temperature is higher than zero. So it, there's a, a lot of if statements and just a lot of mask that are happening here. Then uh, vscale fit flame ramp, which is this, between this and this, else vscale is, is one. So if all of this is true, then amplify the speed scale. If not, it's just one. And then we blur it a tiny bit. Time scale. I don't know why this, why is this set to zero? So time scale, and then we multiply it. That's why I like prefer multiplying. So we just multiply our, our velocity by that. Uh, <clears throat> I might do like uh, a setup with this from scratch if you guys want to, just because I know it can be a bit confusing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, masks and stuff like that. But honestly, the one that Corbin implemented works pretty much the same way. Um, and yeah, it was giving us quite nice boost. It gave us a nice boost at the beginning where the temperature, temperature and the velocity were the highest. And then, so yeah, all of this was done with the MX tools. So all of these explosions. And these, this, was, this was also one of the test uh, demo scenes that you know we were using to test all of the tools and if they're working correctly. So you can see this was looking super nice. All of the different layers that we were getting Corbin shows how to do all of this in his workshop in greater detail. So let me close that down. So I recreated just one part of that setup here. So we have our collider and then through a source shape, we create our source shape. Keep in mind, this is one of the older versions, but the, all the concepts are exactly the same. Then we do the sim, which looks like this. Actually, I think this, yeah. Uh, so it looks like that. So it's just falling down. It doesn't even have anything as a collider because I knew that I would be uh, killing it so fast. See, like it just dissipates really fast. And then inside of here, inside of the sim, this is that sim. So you can see it's quite fast uh, doing this switch, switch technique. So I'll put this back to one. And now let's enable the Skadoosh Power Helper. And let's see, so we have speed and temperature. Uh, 
bam. See how how we are blasting it? So yeah, like it works here, but I, I'm not sure why it didn't work in... I mean, it did work in the other example. It was just going sideways. But this will... We're getting some sparse artifacts. But yeah, this will essentially... Maybe we need to go a bit lower. It's getting too excited. But based on those two masks, which are the speed and the temperature, so maybe we need to go a bit lower, it will give us a nice boost in velocities in those areas. So, yeah, so uh, at the beginning there, the temperature is too low or or the speed is too low. So let me, <clears throat> let me remove the speed. I just want to see. Come on. Let's remove the temperature. Like one of them is not activated. Yeah, I think it's the temperature. Let's go back with speed. So it's it's a matter of tweaking all of this, right? So maybe we split the difference. Nope. So back to one, put this to zero. So the problem is that the temperature is not active at the beginning so if, we, if you're using temperature as a mask it's not gonna be and i'm also exaggerating it by quite a lot so put this to and and then we can i think this was set to um one and four So this will now re gas repeat, which means that our temperature is going to be calculated much faster. So it, it's going to look more correct to to what I had before, because obviously before I had I had that on. So see that? Oof. So I was testing with those other values. So it's quite fast. There's a bunch of mushrooming happening, which is not ideal. Um, the way I would fix that, this is probably too high. So I would go with probably with three. And then this is too high as well, so I would lower this to 30 as our target speed. And then our resolution is way too low to get the right. There's some uh, sparse ar artifacts that are happening here, but honestly, because this was uh, like this one is not that great, but because it happens so fast and it's um, more of a magical blast, I was okay with it. Um, this could have been fixed in comp a bit, and there's like a, a bright flash of light of light that happens in this shot. So, you know, not everything has to be perfect all the time <clears throat> with your simulations, because a lot of it can be fixed or adjusted in compositing. But you can see how that is now different uh, immediately, because we extended our uh, resolution. It's going to be also a lot slower, but we're going to start getting these nice uh, disturbances that before were just invisible because we didn't have enough voxels to work with. But yeah, essentially this is this explosion. It's the same one. Uh, but yeah, this I just spent a bit more time adjusting the values with this one. So oof, see how more explosive it is at the beginning. So those are some of the tricks you could use and how to use the gas accelerate. I'm going to keep this example here so you also get this uh, this piece of code here. So if you want to try this, but honestly, the accelerate here works quite well. Okay. One last one, and that is the field force.